We've all seen the, uh, the impact that open source has had at the enterprise level, but increasingly we see that swing over to impacting uh, individuals. Uh, at the enterprise level, the big internet firms uh, that we're all aware of, uh, the pure plays as well, but then uh, particularly from our vantage point as a hosting provider for small and mid-sized businesses, uh, we see this firsthand. Uh, and what I want to talk about uh, today is that impact, uh, how open source really does enable small business, and then how in turn uh, small business contributes to driving our economy. And then lastly, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, uh, talking about uh, what we see as, uh, as our role in facilitating feedback back into the community uh, to do our part, if you will. So Tim spoke yesterday about, uh, about the notion of the uh, giving uh, economy. And we see this firsthand uh, every single day. Uh, so, so, so to put a na name to it and put a face to it, uh, one of our clients, one of our uh, customers, uh, started a, a firm called Castle Chat, uh, started by uh, Brian and uh, Nicole Sidwar. And what they uh, uh, demonstrated here was an ability to follow their passion for something. In this case, it was for all things Disney. They set out to be an authorized uh, travel agent for Disney, uh, and they went to create a site and build a business around this. So uh, they uh, set out one weekend, and they found uh, the domain castlechat.com, uh, and they, they uh, uh, signed up for hosting. And over the next several weeks, Brian uh, tested and worked with uh, various content management packages. He tried Drupal. He tried Joomla. He finally settled on WordPress, and over the coming weeks, uh, uh, tweaked his site, downloaded and tried different plugins, uh, whether it be for forums on the site, for forms, and various levels of, uh, of commerce packages as well. And they were in business. Um, uh, a month or two afterwards, they had their first customer. And then beyond that, their first international customer, <laughs> which itself is just staggering in terms of the, uh, uh, what uh, open source does for people like Brian and Nicole. Uh, what it's done is it's reduced, if not eliminated, the friction of starting a small business. And we see that in a number of, of different ways. One, there's an economic aspect. If you look back 10 years ago, uh, we lifted some of these figures from 2000 from an article from PC World, the costs were prohibitive. Uh, and the barrier to entry was high in terms of the investment that would have to be made uh, to be able to create access to email or databases or shopping carts or what have you. And today, uh, really, this is very, very fluid and very, very facile in terms of being able to provide that access. And our business uh, uh, itself uh, was built, is built almost entirely on open source. So everything from Apache to MySQL to Perl, PHP, Dovecot, the list just goes on and on and on again. Um, uh, this is what allows us to provide a service, and as Tim said yesterday, a subscription model at several or so dollars a month uh, uh, for, uh, for customers to enable that access. Uh, but it's not just that, it's also the ability uh, and, this, and this universe of open source tools that are available uh, where yesterday you had to pay for something, there is, there is uh, an infinite number of possibilities, uh, many of them open source, if not low cost, to be able to, uh, to, to uh, degrease the skids for starting a business. And then lastly, uh, as well, in terms of the economics, uh, the onboarding process itself is seamless. Uh, we have a one-click installer called Simple Scripts. It, it eliminates uh, the need uh, for uh, a small business community to really have a, a deep understanding like this group does of open source, of packages, how to deploy, how to upgrade, how to roll back, et cetera. We just simply provide the one-click service to, to load it up, to take it down. And this is something that we open up to any hosting provider, any company. It's, it's, it, it, it's, a, it, it's an open uh, uh, contribution from, uh, from our end in those terms. What open source also allowed was uh, the notion of experimentation. 
where Brian and Nicole tweaked their site, changed their logo, updated content, uh, changed the, their, their positioning, you think even further beyond uh, uh, 10 years or so ago, that would have been a commitment in a lot of print materials, a lot of brochure wear, print advertising, et cetera. So the inertia uh, of, of, of sticking to a plan uh, and, and driving it forward really has been, has been uh, lubricated as well. Um, one other point that just to make, and I'm going to go back one slide here to finish that thought, is the, um, uh, the uh, last point that I wanted to make about the customer base that Brian and Nicole have access to. And this is an important point for us, and really I find it amazing that today any company that has a web presence, whether you are large, whether you are small, an individual player, when you have web presence, you are instantly global. And that's evidenced with Castle Chat by having uh, access and uh, families who are planning vacations to come to Disney to understand uh, uh, what they're getting into, uh, if that could be conveyed, uh, uh, traveling, uh, what, how to make bookings, et cetera. Uh, those are all the things that uh, we find in terms of, uh, of what open source really enables small business to do. It's, it's, it's truly fascinating. It's something that uh, really energizes us uh, uh, really every day of the week. So this brings into uh, into the picture, the, uh, uh, the impact on the economy. And this really drove the paper that Tim introduced and uh, we uh, uh, published yesterday. Uh, in this study, we wanted to look at uh, simply saying, if, uh, what is the impact? Uh, if, if by any measure, pick a metric, small, mid-sized business helps to drive the economy. Well, if open source helps to drive small business, then is open source uh, uh, really uh, an instrumental element in driving that economy? If, uh, if it's hidden uh, uh, and, and not really in the discussion. So Tim talked about some of the, the details here. Just what did we do? We, we randomly surveyed about 60,000 of our customers. Um, we aggregated and anonymized some usage data of over a million, uh, a million of our customers and came up with uh, some interesting takeaways. Uh, for one, 70% of our customers uh, identify themselves as a small business, whether that's an individual, a, a, a sole proprietor, a home-based business, or something larger, uh, the small and mid-sized businesses in, in that category. Um, two, they're generally not technical. However, uh, most of these uh, uh, small businesses uh, create their own web presence. They build their own websites. That's an interesting, interesting revelation there. Uh, what do they use the sites for? Principally, they use it for information sharing, uh, whether it's static content or dynamic content that's uh, frequently updated. They use it for uh, lead gen, uh, to, to acquire and attract customers, for brand building, and some element and notion of, uh, of commerce. One out of five of these uh, users generates more than half of their revenue from, uh, from their website. Yet we see about 85% of them uh, generate less than $50,000 a year. So this is, this is a significant long tail here. And going over the math uh, uh, that you can read about exhaustively in the paper, this $1 trillion impact, just in pure flow through uh, uh, websites of small and mid-sized business, is alone uh, uh, really impressive, but probably understates the actual impact in terms of when you think about uh, uh, the leads that get generated, perhaps there's a phone number on the site that somebody picks up and makes a, a purchase, or they decide to come in and visit your retail location, uh, to say nothing of, uh, as some of our customers do, the utilization of commercial commerce packages as well. So the, the impact is really, uh, uh, from that perspective, uh, indisputable. What we then, uh, in, the, in the context of the paper, and Tim spoke a little bit about the conversation with uh, Hari Ravichandran, uh, uh, our CEO and himself, about what is the give back? Uh, what, is, what can we do, having built this business off of open source? Uh, how can we continue to contribute uh, to it? And we, uh, we, we really amounted to this notion that, uh, that our responsibility is in uh, sustained uh, sustained commitment to the community. Uh, and that's through two things. One, 
uh, to help projects and two, to ex enhance the exposure of those projects, in particular to our base of, of, uh, of users, those small businesses. So what, what are we doing about that? I think the, the easy part, which we have done and we will continue to do, is continue to fund these projects. But what, what really what we're doing in terms of being able to put a, put a sustained commitment to it is that we're putting resources uh, against this. And uh, this has got us uh, uh, incredibly excited. I see, when I see the, the Cheshire grins out there amongst my teammates, that's, uh, this is really something that uh, we're, we're truly motivated for. Uh, so what, what, what happened? Uh, we, uh, Jared Smith has uh, joined the company. Uh, Jared uh, is a, uh, uh, has a substantial amount of background in open source. Um, uh, aside from being an O'Reilly author, he is, um, uh, was most recently the project lead for the Fedora project, and then prior to that, the community manager for the Asterisk program for voice uh, over IP platforms. So Jared has begun to build a team around full-time resources that work specifically on aiding uh, upstream projects, contributing directly to it, uh, not, uh, not in our infrastructure for those projects, but actually and literally for, for the projects themselves. And I think we're, we're going on, um, uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll add another resource again uh, today as we speak. What else can we do uh, from that perspective? Uh, we're going to create uh, uh, this notion uh, and continue with direct feedback provide statistics, trends about what's happening on our platform, uh, what's happening with installations of the projects, why are people uninstalling, um, uh, what's coming in from our call center to be able to create that, that feedback loop uh, as well. Uh, and then helping you and your projects from the experience that Jared and his team have about helping you to grow, helping you to scale, uh, and then also in terms of helping you to be able to gain exposure to our ecosystem. Our ecosystem has about, uh, we're approaching three million users on it. Uh, again, hundreds of thousands uh, uh, of them uh, being small business, uh, like, uh, like the ones we described earlier with Castle Chat. Um, and our uh, one-click installer tool, which again, uh, eliminates any of the friction in terms of having to deploy something, I think we, by some counts, are about five million installs using that. Five million installs of open source tools uh, and plugins uh, over the last year. So in terms of this ecosystem and being able to commit to that, you know, these, are the, these are the things that we are focusing on uh, heavily. Uh, a couple of other, other areas, too, uh, where we'll, we'll give direct focus is participating in forums uh, where your projects are being discussed uh, as, uh, as advocates, as helpers to be able to, uh, uh, to aid uh, users as well. And when I uh, step back and we, uh, we think about this, really it comes back to the beginning here. And the beginning is, and our commitment is, that to continue to build the bridges from the open source community to small business, and then continue to invest in the relationships with the open source community on behalf of that business. And just to cite what, uh, what Tim reminded us all of yesterday, uh, to us, this is really the work that matters. Thank you. <laughs>